You are listening to episode 207 of the Confident Coaches Podcast, the one where you're going to start dating your clients. All right, let's go. Welcome to the Confident Coaches Podcast, a place for creating the self-confidence you need to do your best work as a life coach. If you want to bring more boldness, more resilience, and more joy to your work, this is the place for you. I'm your host, Amy Latta. Let's dive in. Hey, coach, I'm so excited to have you here. And we are continuing in this series of elevating your income. So far, we've talked about why you and no one else. We've talked about clear-cut messaging. We had a fabulous interview with my ADHD coach last week for a little interjection. And now we're picking up where we left off with learning how to date your clients. So what we're really talking about here in pure marketing speak is lead generation and funnels. Okay, that where do you find new people and how do you move them from meeting them to working with you to what's their next step? These are key numbers that businesses track when they, that's all part of their marketing. There's a lot of marketing lingo, jargon that you hear all of the time. And what is often left out of the conversation is that these are human beings that we're talking about, right? Prospects, leads, they're people, they're humans. And so often in our case, they are humans that are struggling with something and they're on the receiving end of of social media or emails or whatever, and they're scrolling and they are inundated with information all of the time. And the last thing that they want to feel like, the last thing that they want the energy of, what's my lead generation strategy? What is my highest performing funnel with the highest conversion rates? I mean, that is the lingo of what we're talking about. But I want this conversation, we need to remember this conversation is about elevating It's about elevating yourself. It's about elevating your audience. And there are things, actually just reminded of a a story of of some coaching back and forth that I did recently with a one-on-one client on what could produce a higher conversion rate versus what feels more like them and and feels more like what the person on the other side would want to experience. And that's why this lead generation, this funnel conversation is going to be talked about very differently. We're talking about dating your clients. We're talking about their experience of you. We're talking about from the time that they meet you to the time that they decide they are or aren't working with you, how do you want them to feel, right? How can you extend conversations? How can you invite them to the next conversation? And it's this balance. It's a balance between knowing what your systems, your funnels your steps are so that you can tell where people are dropping off. You know, it's kind of like, it's kind of like if you are out there dating and at some point people just stopped calling you back and answering your phone calls, you would, you know, hire a relationship coach or you would talk about it with friends to figure out what, you know, every time we get to date three, (laughs) No one ever calls me back. Something's happening, right? Something's going on. So this is a balance between knowing what your systems and your your steps and your funnel, what you want it to be, and the human beings on the receiving side of this. And you can make this as simple as you want it to be. You can make it as complicated as you want it to be. I always opt for simple. It's really fun when I had this conversation with my 
elevate your income group, the very first group that's going through it. You know, there was conversations around, you know, this is too much. I don't like it. I, th- this conversation is, I, I, I would rather this be so much more organic and so much more fluid and 100%. This is about bringing your organic, bringing to your fluid into some way that you can still evaluate in some way. Notice where your people are dropping off because what happens is you will start sending out emails. You'll start posting. Your messaging could be completely on point, right? You know, clear cut messaging. You can know what you want to be known for and you can set up the free Facebook group and you can create a book and you can have all the pieces into play, but those individual pieces don't equal clients. Sending an email won't get you a client. And even how I said that, right, won't get you a client. But that's how we're thinking, right? I ain't getting clients. But how you send that email, how you are dating those clients, the invitations that are included in those emails, what you are inviting them to do next is what lets people know that you aren't trying to get a client. You are nurturing a relationship. Both elements need to be there. If you have all those pieces in place and you're like, I'm just a go with the flow kind of gal and it's amazing, but then at the end of the day, you aren't working with the people that you want. Your business isn't growing. It still feels like you're constantly struggling to get clients. Then we want to be able to go, okay, where am I losing them? Where am I not being clear that there's a next step for them to take? Some people are going to think very methodically, systematic, and they want all of the first they do this, and then they do that, and then they do this, and then they do that. And you're going to mark people as they go through your funnel. And other people don't want any system whatsoever. And (laughs) what am I always saying? 9.9 times out of 10, what's going to work for you is some flow in between. Okay. Because let's be honest, we are in a dating game that you're meeting lots of people. You're getting to know them. You're continually inviting them to have more conversations with you. We want this experience to be fun, to be interesting. And we want it without strings attached, right? With consent on both sides of the table. We don't want to force people into future conversations, even if, controversial point coming up, even if that leads to a higher percentage of people taking the next step. So an example of this is if you see a lot of freebies that are quizzes and, you know, there's this I, I, legitimate conversation that I've had with a client is, do you capture their email before or after the results? So if you want the higher conversion rate, You have them take the quiz, but if they want any kind of result, they have to give you the email address. That results in more email addresses, correct. And also, as a consumer, I hate that. I don't love that. I hate it when there's a quiz, but in order to find out anything about what the quiz just happened, I have to give you my email address, and maybe I just wanted to take the quiz for shits and giggles. So maybe... You are a person that's like, I'm totally fine with that. I want those emails. But for a lot of us, and for me and this one client specifically, we were like, no, I can give them simplified results. An oversimplification that at least even those looky-loos walk away with some sense of satisfaction. But then there's going to be like a secondary offer so that they get the quiz, they get the knowledge and the looky-loos and the people who just like taking quizzes can go on their way and you don't have to collect their email addresses because they're probably not going to buy from you anyway. But the people who want the more advanced information, the people who want the more in-depth analysis of what their quiz results actually mean in order to get that information, that's when you're asked for their email address. It's part of the dating game. Some people just want to meet as many people as possible, get them on that email list and let the dating game start there. Some people, the dating is going to start earlier. 
So this is about what is it going to look like for you? What's your dating style? And I think what it comes down to, what's the experience of you that you want them to have? Here's an interesting thing before we dive in. You're already doing this in some way. You're already having some form of dating ritual. You just probably haven't thought about what it is. Maybe you have. Most people haven't actually put it on paper to say, oh yeah, this is how I normally, like I normally post here and then I invite them this way and then I have them schedule a call and then I have my my scheduler send them an email reminder and then I have, you know, this thing sent to them and then we get on the call. Like you already have a lot of this lined out and you've probably been doing it without really thinking too much about it. What I find most often is a lot of times is we don't always have what we need set up. We have ideas. Um, So as a, for instance, if you want people to go to your schedule, you need to have that set up on your scheduler. And if people aren't showing up to your consult calls, you need to have the task having been done of actually setting up the reminder If they are still not showing up, even with the email reminder, because we know emails can get lost, maybe you, you know, maybe sometimes you remember to send them a quick text or personal, like separate personal email. Sometimes maybe you don't. There can be a lot of inconsistency. There can be a lot of, I just don't know why people are showing up. So that's what this conversation about is acknowledging what you're already doing and then deciding if you want to change it up. The other thing is like, you might know exactly what you want to do and say when you meet somebody online, but maybe you've never set up any way of like, you've met somebody in person and you have no rhyme or reason. You have no, and I have a fun story about this, by the way, (laughs) there's no rhyme and reason of how you nurture that relationship. Dating your bestest clients is about their experience of you. From the time that they meet you to the time that you two are saying goodbye, there is no right or wrong. There is no right or wrong. I can't stress that enough. And also, if you're losing people along the way from meeting them to engaging to signing and you don't know why, the offer can be found in this nurturing plan. And that's what this is. Sending emails doesn't sign the clients. Having a book doesn't sign the clients. Having a free Facebook group doesn't sign the clients. But how you use those emails to engage with with people human to human, how that book fits into your meeting you to working with you flow, how you've thought about using that free group to turn members of the free group into paying clients. That's the experience that you want to think about and start nurturing what you want that experience to be. So when I was first starting out, so this would be the first half of my business, the early years, and I joined a lot of local networking groups and everybody said, join networking groups meet a lot of people, schedule one-on-ones with them. And this is how you grow your business. And I was like, okay. So guess what I did? I went to all the networking groups that I could. I joined one. I met a ton of people. I had a ton of one-on-one coffees. And yeah, crickets. Lots of coffees. But where was this magical business growth that people were talking about? (laughs) Because having one-on-one meeting people and having coffees at your local coffee shop five times a week. Guys, I was meeting. I, I was having anywhere from like two to eight of these a week. Consistently, regularly. Like... Averaging for sure two a week every single week for like two years. Because I wasn't thinking about how that one-on-one conversation became, could become a growth strategy. What was the nurturing behind that? It's kind of like you have a free Facebook group and like people tell you free Facebook groups are the way to gain more clients. So you start a free Facebook group and then you're like, why aren't the people showing up? 
uh, networking, having one-on-one -on -one coffees is, is how you grow your business and you create more clients. So why am I having an average of two coffees every single week with all of these people and meeting a ton of amazing people? Where are the clients? Because the thing itself doesn't, I, I'm like, it's kind of like the date in and of itself doesn't lead to marriage. It's what happens on the date that leads to marriage, right? It's the conversation. It's the finding out if people want to take a next step. It's the finding out if the people who are in that step with you maybe aren't your ideal person, but you leave them better off and they tell people about you, right? That you've thought about, like, even if they aren't your people, you still leave them in a way that they become a voice on your behalf and a referral base for you, right? So even if you're on a great date with somebody and you're like, I don't think this is like, this is like, I'm going to, sorry, I'm going to go with a very heteronormative uh, conversation here. This feels like more like brother, sister vibes, but I really, you know, do you have any friends, right? Whether or not you would actually come out and say that is, is an entirely different conversation. But that's the idea here. That I was meeting all of these people and it wasn't turning into clients because I hadn't thought about this. This is why this conversation is so, it's just so important. So there are a ton of places where you can meet your bestest people. There's online, there's offline. We're talking about Facebook personal, Facebook business, Instagram, TikTok, LinkedIn, YouTube, Pinterest, Twitter slash X slash threads slash blue sky. I, we're not really sure where that is. It is October of 2023. So we're not really sure if any of those are a viable place because there's shit going on in that space. There's other people's platforms, you know, Facebook groups that you might that are really large that you are commenting on big influencers, social media posts. There's uh, you can meet people through collaborations. There's podcasting or having YouTube channels. There's paid advertising. You can do all of that online and there are pros and cons to each of those things. Okay. And then you have, and actually as I'm looking at this, I actually have all of this put together in a grid that I share with my free to paid coaches and my one-on-one -on -one clients and my Elevate Your Income, I could totally make this a thing. But by the end of this podcast recording, I'm going to give you a place where you can go and download this, where to meet your bestest clients, which means as I'm recording this, I'm literally going to make up a web address to send you to. But we'll, we're going to get that solved for you right here. So then you have in-person. And there's pros and cons to that. There's networking events, vendor fairs, gatherings, referrals, speaking events, books, and other publications that you might use. So all of these places that you can meet people, they all have pros. They all have cons. Meeting people online has pros and cons. Meeting people offline has pros and cons. Again, there's no right or wrong. But dating your bestest clients starts with where are you meeting people? Where are you meeting people? Have you thought about where you're meeting people? Have you thought about all the different ideas? Are you meeting people one way because that's what you were told? But there's, I had, how many ways did I just list? At least 20 different ways that you can meet people. So you want to think about where are you already? What do you love about that platform? What are you really good at already? Are you better at writing online? Are you better at video? Are you better at meeting people in person? Like you, you want to meet what your, what your natural abilities are. You want your natural abilities to meet or to match the, the venue that you were planning on meeting people. You know, is there a place that you're currently trying to meet people that's not working for you? You know, and do you have any ideas as to why it's not working for you? Is this literally something that you're doing because you, you were told you have to, but you hate it? Well, then like cross that off your list. Or is this a way that you know you can and you want to be meeting people and you haven't figured it out? Are you Amy Latta six, seven years ago on your 27th coffee trying to figure out why you're enjoying the process? Why is everybody else turning these meetings into clients and you aren't? <laughs> 
it's probably because of what's coming up next, which is your nurturing plan. Um, is there any place you'd like to add to what you're already doing? Are there any things you haven't tried that you want to try, right? Maybe you're using a platform that you really love, say Instagram, but maybe you haven't started doing lives or you haven't started doing reels, right? Maybe it's, you know, it, it's again, maybe you keep going to the same place to meet people, but you start trying different things to meet people within the one place. Who are people that have the same audience as you, but sell a slightly different service? These are great sources for collaboration. You want to think about podcasts, platforms, you know, what people have a huge platform already that sells a similar service that you can look at, um, you know, who's not, who is interacting with those big platforms that isn't getting attention from their teams, right? These are all different places and different ways that you can meet people. And stay till the end of the podcast, because by the end of the podcast, I will have a link for you to go sign up for, go download my where to meet your bestest clients, okay? And of all of the pros and cons of each for all of those so that you can, you can legitimately go, oh, okay, you want to know what this platform over here sounds like? It's way more of a match for me than this one over here that I've been forcing, Okay. So once you know where you want to meet them, I want you to at least have a plan for meeting people both in person and online, even if you've chosen to focus on one thing. Because here's the thing, if you only want to meet people online, you still are going to meet people in person. And you're going to want to be able to decide in advance what you want to say if someone asks you about what you do. And how you talk about your business and the next step that you might want to take for them. Because now we're moving into your nurturing plan. You've met the people. Now your nurturing plan is your lead generation strategy. It's your funnel. It's your nurturing and relationship building plan. It's their experience of you after they've met you. So you might be an online only business, but you still meet human beings in the real world. And you're going to want to know where you want to send them, how you want to invite them to take another step with you. And the same thing, if you only want to build your business in person, why do you need any sort of online presence? Easy, because people are going to look you up. Most people are going to do a Google search. They're going to want to check you out. And you want to be able to send them to a place if they ask about it, right? So you're going to want to pick at least one online place, at least one online place where you can have a little bit of info about you. This can be as simple as just having an Instagram profile that has, you know, your your basic, you know, that has at least a grid of, is it nine? <laughs> I should have looked that up before I said that. Yeah, if you pull up an Instagram profile and it's the, you want them to be able to see, yeah, you at least want them to be able to see nine graphics images with your like basic platform content with, you know, the basic what you want them to do next, the, the, a basic social media profile. You want to be able to send them someplace online so that they can see, oh yeah, okay. So remember, you own a business and all businesses benefit from even a super basic online profile. This is your calling card, the place where people can scope you out and verify that you are for real. It doesn't have to be intricate, complicated. So you want to think about what social media platform of that list that you're going to download of where to meet people, which online place do you want to have your business have a presence? And then What keywords are people going to search in order to find you? Because then you can create a social media profile where you make sure your name is super obvious, use keywords as much as possible to tell them what you do, and you want to make your social media profile about them, right? How your work helps them. You want to make sure your picture is super clear, who you are, use a headshot that shows your personality. You can totally take a selfie. It doesn't have to be professionally done. 
but you don't want it to be of your dog or of a sunset or a piece of architecture. And you want it to link to some super simple freebie, some super simple, like, or your consultation link. You want it to link to the next step that they can take with you. Okay. By the way, every platform has different character amounts and areas that you can fill out. So, you know, this is something that we can do when you are working with me is actually like, okay, what platforms are you on? And let's tailor your social media profile to that person. It's kind of like your, sorry, it's kind of like your Tinder profile. <laughs> you got to set up a Tinder profile, right? It, but, and you want it to be you and you want it to be reflective of their experience of you. And it doesn't have to be complicated, but your online presence is essentially your Tinder profile. And do you want them to swipe left or swipe right? You want your bestest clients to know really obviously if they need to be swiping left or swiping right. By the way, I don't know which one is which because I've never used Tinder. (laughs) So then it just becomes, you know how you meet people. I want you to create A, okay, if I meet people online, this is the super simple way I'm going to take them from meeting them online to having them become a client. And if I meet people offline, in person, these are the steps that I'm going to invite them to take with me there. I've avoided making these plans because they are technically funnels. This is a sales funnel. Even if you don't have a quote unquote freebie funnel running Facebook ads, this is a sales funnel. And I've hesitated to do this because I don't want to be salesly. I don't want to treat people like a a number, you know? And then when I did say, you know, when I did learn about how to create funnels, I would get very overwhelmed because there was all of this, you know, if they do this, you want to send them here. And if they do that, you want to send them there. And my mind would just get so overcomplicated. So I just wouldn't create anything at all, which is why I sat at all of those one-on-ones with outgrowing my business, right? Which is why I have set up Facebook groups in the past and been like, where's the magical Facebook group to client line here? Why is this not happening? This is just be a human. So I want you, like, that's more my style. And this is the marriage of how to just be a human and not be a, a, these people are just numbers to me. Two things can be true at the same time. It's all about starting and continuing conversations. You want to invite them to have a conversation. So I want you to think about how are you inviting people to continue the conversation with you? When you are online, what is your path? And it's like, and, and you actually, I'm, I provide this grid. The grid can be very like, Oh, that looks a lot that it's a spreadsheet. You don't have to use the spreadsheet. My mind likes the spreadsheet so that I can actually see it in my mind. And then each step becomes a task that I need to make sure that that email is actually set up. Otherwise, I'm like, yeah, and then they'll go to Acuity and they'll sign up and we'll magically end up on the phone call. But no, actually, that magic requires (laughs) steps. Sitting at the coffee shop isn't magic. You actually have to know what you're going to say to them, what you're going to give to them, where you're going to send them so that they can continue the conversation with you, right? The more you engage with other humans, the more you are going to put usefulness out into the world. And what I also want you to remember that this isn't about requiring that it immediately come back to you. When you are thinking about dating your bestest clients, you're talking about continuously asking them to continue the conversation with you. And if they don't, it's totally okay. Keep putting usefulness, also known as value, into the world and believe that it's coming back to you. Beware the desire to want each human you interact with to buy for you in order to validate that this is working because most won't. And by most, I mean like one to 2% of the people you meet will ultimately work with you. Yeah. Like 
10% of the people actively engaging with you are going to say yes. 1% of the people that you're meeting are going to say yes. So if you demand or require in your mind that everybody you invite on a date is going to say yes, this is going to be a painful dating ritual. It's about asking as many people who are the bestest fit to continue conversations with you and not demand that that individual person always say yes in order for you to believe that there are plenty of people who want to say yes. But there's lots of people. This is why knowing where you want to meet people and showing up and continuously making those offers in the one platform you're going to focus on over and over again is so important. Meeting as many people as possible so that those numbers don't freak you out because you're like, well, I got to meet so many people before I get a yes. That is true. And also it's not as hard to meet those people. And you're going to download my grid of where to meet people with the pros and cons of where you want to be. So you can focus your energy on that. As soon as you expect the person in front of you to say yes, you're going to get graspy. You get needy. You're looking for them to give you that external validation. And nobody likes to be on a date with people who are, so you want to go to bed with me? Do you want to go to bed with me? We're, we're going to like get naked and go to bed, right? We're getting married, right? We're going to be like, dude, just met you. <laughs> Please stop. Please stop right now. Run, run. <laughs> it's about engaging in conversations and nurturing relationships and letting go of this, letting go of the need of this human in front of you to say yes. Okay. So I want you to think about list the places you plan to meet people. At a minimum, choose one online source and one in-person source, right? Under each one, what's the next thing you're going to invite them to do? And then the next thing, and then the next thing, assuming that they're interested, like let's assume it's yeses all the way down. What is the next thing that you're going to invite them to do and that you are going to do to keep that conversation going? So as a, for instance, you have a, Facebook post providing valuable information that invites them to schedule a consult call. The next step would be to send them to your consult call calendar. The next step would be emailing the confirmation with those call details. And maybe it's the same email. Maybe it's a different email where you are maybe asking them some questions about what they're looking for. There's a, you know, a 24 hour call reminder email and or text. Maybe that's something you send personally. Maybe that's something that, you know, Acuity or Calendly is going to send you. Something that I noticed is I would get all of these consult calls, but so many people wouldn't show up to the actual call. So I started adding a text or a quick email five to 15 minutes before the call. I started shooting small videos of me on camera going, this is me. I'm Amy. I'm so excited to meet you. I'm going to call you with this phone number in 15 minutes. And then you have the consultation call. What are those steps? What is that plan? And then have your next steps laid out also. If they say no, what are you going to send them? What are you going to say? Where are you going to leave them? If they say yes, what are you going to send them? How do they take those next steps? How do they pay you? That is also part of your dating plan. That is also part of your nurturing. It all is two things. What do you want their experience of you to be? You get to decide what those pieces are. You could have all of this in a DM. You can have all of this in a back-to-back text messaging. You can have all of this. It it can be as scheduled using uh, tech or not scheduled. But what do you want their experience from meeting you online all the way down to saying yes or no? And then if they say no, what do you want their experience of you to be after that? Are you going to say, great, thanks? Are you going to send them a podcast or an email? Are you going to send them a freebie that they can leave with? 
And then if they say yes, and it's so funny, I have this conversation all of the time. I don't know if I should have them pay on the phone. I don't know if I should send them a scheduling link. I don't know if I should have book the call while we are still on the consult call, like book the next, the paid call. I don't know if I should send them a scheduler. There's no right or wrong answer, but you want to have at least thought of what you're going to do. Otherwise, Amy sitting in a coffee shop, having a ton of conversations, wondering why she's doing all the work and I'm not getting paid coaching people, right? You just want to consider what that is. And the same thing for meeting people. You want to have at least one meeting somebody in person or out in the wild. You know, maybe you're engaging with them in conversation, uh, networking a party, uh, maybe you're, you're religious, a house of some kind. And you, based on the conversation, you're going to invite them to talk more if it makes sense. So you're going to invite them to schedule a one-on-one coffee with you. And then you're going to send some sort of reminder for meeting you, how excited you are to meet them. And then you're actually going to meet them. And then based on that, you are either going to, they're a great prospective client and that turns into a consultation face to face and you're going to start onboarding them right there or you know at a minimum you know that when you get home you're going to send them an email or thank you note of some kind you're probably already doing so much of what I've said this conversation is about have you at least seen it have you looked at it do you know what those steps are and if you know what those steps are like if you know you want to send them a handwritten note then make sure you have stationary right like it also becomes their experience of you becomes like this is language from a former mentor their experience of you is client facing but for all your client facing actions there's business facing actions I need to set that up I need to have that profile set up I need to have stationary that I'm going to send that note with how do you want people to experience you What's their experience of you from start to finish? What's their experience with you after they've worked with you? What's your outboarding process? When they're done working with you, are there any pieces you want to add? Do you just have a last call and say goodbye? Do you send them a little gift? Do you send them a little note when you're onboarding? Do you send them a, do you send them gifts and packages? I've had clients that are I've had coaches that have sent me like super personalized gifts. That's not me. That's probably not what I'm going to do because I don't have the executive function in order to do that. But I do have an email already set aside. So when you're when you're onboarding with free to paid coach, there's already email set up. But if I'm onboarding with one on one client, I already have kind of like a basic email ready to go that I'm going to fill in with all of the personal information. How do you want to date your bestest clients? What do you want their experience to be of you? Okay, so if you want to know where to meet your bestest people, I've got a new freebie for you. Go to amylatta.com forward slash meet people. M-E-E-T-P-E-O-P-L-E. Meet people. I will send you a list of my 18 different places you could be meeting people right now. In that list of 18, I give you the pros and cons of each so that you can decide which ones match your personality best and you can just pick one and run with it. And if you are already making money as a coach and you want to hone your dating of people, if you want to hone your um, why you and no one else and your clear-cut messaging and um, how you date how we nurture relationships with your bestest people, the next round of Elevate Your Income starts November 1st. So download that freebie and send me an email to say if you want in to the November Elevate Your Income Marketing Intensive because you will have all of these answered. You will decide exactly what you want your nurturing plan to be, what you don't want it to be, how simplified or complicated. How does your book fit into all of this? How does this Facebook group, how are we going to utilize this Facebook group? Let's hash out all of those details. Let's drop out anything that you're doing that you don't need to be doing. Where are you overcomplicating this? Let's figure all of that out. If you are already making money, 
if you're already signing clients, it's, it's not getting your coaching business off the ground. You've already made a good twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 as a life coach. Elevate your income is your next step so that you can actually turn your business into something that's generating revenue and let's turn it into a business that creates an income that you're going to use to live your life outside of your business. The next round starts November 1st. So download the amylatta.com forward slash meet people freebie. And if you know that you want to be in the next round, or if you have more questions about the next round, reply to that email that I send you. All right, friends, can't wait to hear. I can't wait to see how you put this work out into the world. I can't wait to hear from you where your favorite places to meet people are, what you love about meeting people, how you're meeting people, how you're nurturing those relationships. I can't wait to see what you do in the world. And until next week. Coach, it's time to sign your first free client, your first paid client, your next client and to learn how to do it consistently and having a hell of a lot of fun along the way. This is exactly what you're going to do in Free to Paid Coach. It's the only program giving you step-by-step what to do to become a paid coach and step-by-step how to handle the roller coaster emotions that come with doing what you need to do to become a paid coach. If you know you can't not do this life coaching thing, but believing that you can do it, handling rejection, and remembering how to do all of those things shuts you down, the free-to-paid coach community is waiting for you. Find everything that you're looking for inside. It's only $1,000, payments are available, and then you are in forever. Visit amylatta.com forward slash FTPC to join us right now. See you inside. Let's get paid, coach. Thanks so much for listening to the Confident Coaches podcast. I invite you to learn more. Come visit me at amylatta.com. And until next week, let's go do epic stuff.